The uh, latest and best gift to me in this role was attending NASCOM last week, National Association of Schools, Colleges, Schools and Colleges of the United Methodist Church. Uh, Dr. Ted Brown, Dr. David Beckley were there as, as members of our board who were also at NASCOM. We had uh, some other folks there as well. But the, the facilitator was Ron Heifetz, Ronald Heifetz, the author of Leadership Without Easy Answers and the Practice of, practice of Adaptive Leadership. Uh, it was very rich, very helpful. It was uh, comparative, comparatively like eating white chocolate. It was just really rich. And uh, most of you know that Heifetz is the guru, the author of uh, books, these books about adaptive leadership and, and where we as a, the Methodist Church are talking about adaptive challenge, adaptive leadership. It's all of these uh, applications are, are taken from as, as uh, the origin is his work. He is currently a professor at the Kennedy School of Management at Harvard Business School and a, con a frequent contributor to Har the Harvard Business Review. So this was a great opportunity for our presidents to sit at the feet of the master and me to be a fly on the wall. Uh, Heifetz is Jewish and to his Methodist audience, he acknowledged that Jesus was one of their best boys. <laughs> I took eight pages of notes, single-spaced, and I want to briefly share some things that I think uh, he said that I think inform our work together and uh, line out some challenges and responsibilities and opportunities that I think spring from his ideas. Some things suggest that we're on the right path, and some things suggest we need course corrections. Before Heifetz was a teacher and student of leadership, he was a cellist and a physician. So many of his metaphors and, and lots of his language are both musical and scientific. Uh, he talked about leading a board as, uh, as a, an exercise in, in an orchestra director. And I thought that was an interesting, interesting metaphor. But his background in science, he made some interesting observations. In nature, the evolutionary question is, what is essential and what is expendable? What is essential and what is expendable? What innovation needs to take, to take place? What innovation needs to happen to take our best selves forward? He said, nature is highly conservative. God didn't do zero-based budgeting. God tinkered with what is and accumulates new capacities over time. Highly transformative change is also conservative. Jesus knew this when he gave us the parable about the wheat and the weeds. Uh, you have to be careful when you're pulling out the weeds not to pull out the wheat as well. We must both be enthusiastic about change and hold it with what needs to be conserved. Sadly, we pick fights that are unnecessary because it's all about change rather than about what should be preserved. Our community, I, I realized this as he was talking, that our community, the United Methodist Church, is a natural ecosystem facing many challenges. Variations create greater ability to adapt to suit other environments. And here I think is a crucial question for us as a board and for our United Methodist Church. How can we allow local adaptation, yet general diversity? How can we allow local adaptation, yet general diversity? 
I think this is the adaptive challenge of the United Methodist Church. This is what we are after. This is the goal, I believe, of, a, of developing a global discipline. The coming, the realization, the gradual realization that one size does not fit all, and how can we adapt and learn that we must anchor innovation in what is essential. One of the best parts as I was listening to him was the realization that, friends, we're doing a lot of things right. We're doing a lot of things right. He says that innovative solutions often lie within us. We don't need to import solutions. And I think this is what we're doing in our Young Clergy Initiative and our Central Conference Theological Initiative. By the process that we set up, we aren't setting up a new bureaucracy, hiring people to run around and do this Young Clergy Initiative. We're taking the work back to the people by receiving grants, funding new initiatives. Uh, innovation is experimental. The other thing he said that, that I think we all need to, to uh, take to heart is that experimentation is dangerous. Experiment has the same root as peril, as danger. You can blow up the lab. <laughs> In the Young Clergy Initiative, we're running a lot of experiments at the same time. And he also said that Experimentation, we have to be able to tolerate a high rate of failure in experimentation. Uh, but most of us, myself included, want the big play. We want the solution, the, solution, the magic bullet. And uh, it doesn't happen that way. Lots of people bet the farm and lose the farm. And they go under. We need to convince the church to experiment and have a higher tolerance for risk and failure. We need to be highly conservative and highly experimental at the same time. 